What's up everybody and welcome to Adventure FPV. My name is Lee. It's raining outside today, so that means that I'm not gonna be flying, but I thought I'd use this opportunity to share some information about my FPV video editing flow, the workflow that I use. So to give you a little bit of background about myself, I started flying GPS, camera, DJI drones, whatever you wanna call them back in 2013. I started up a media company and I've been doing things like commercial applications, stock video footage, real estate, weddings, things like that. And so I have some experience that I've learned from editing over the years and I've just started flying FPV about two months ago and I've been incorporating those techniques into my FPV stuff. So I thought I'd just share a little bit about what I've learned and how I edit things in my workflow because I've had people asking. I'm not the best video editor in the world so this isn't some expert level editing uh, tutorial. This is just to maybe help you guys out a little bit with uh, the way I do things and you know the way I match my music up with the video. Um, that's really one of the most important things to me is setting key moments of my flight in with the music. Um, this workflow is not going to be about like, oh, we're going to chop this piece of a, a, a flight and chop it in with this one and this one. This isn't like a, a compilation. This is going to be more for like one packs. If, if you're into flying one packs or you have flows, this is more so for that. We're gonna jump into Real Steady Go first to show you how I smooth out my GoPro footage that way. And then we're gonna get into Final Cut Pro. That is the software that I use. This will work in Resolve or Premiere Pro or whatever. It's the same techniques, probably just different places in the programming. I'm just used to Final Cut Pro and that's what I use. So let's go ahead and hop into the software and I'll show you. All right, so let's go ahead and just jump into Real Steady Go because that is a program that I use. If you don't use that, use Hypersmooth or you don't use stabilization, you can go ahead and fast forward to the next section of the video, but I do wanna show you my workflow using Real Steady Go. So I'm just gonna select a short video. So Real Steady Go uses your GoPro gyroscope data to sync up with the actual video footage. And when it picks that data, I don't think it does a very good job. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean. If you click on one of these sync points, it's got two sync points here that it chose and I click adjust, you can see this, see that black bar coming down at the top? That's gonna to be lost video resolution. Basically, you wanna set a sync point where you have a flat level or you know a, a continuous movement in one direction. You're not doing this with your drone or up or down. You want the GoPro to be moving in one direction so when it syncs that data, it doesn't get that little blip there. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete this. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete the second one too because I'm pretty sure it's garbage. I mean, we can check it, but I bet it's garbage. Yeah, garbage, garbage. So we're gonna go ahead and just delete that. So like I said, what we wanna do is find a spot where it's, you're kind of maybe just flying flat and level um, or there's a spot where you have a, a few seconds where you're not twisting or panning like this. We don't want the camera to be twisting or panning or, or, or pitching up and down. So we're just gonna scan. So this looks pretty good. The spot there where it's kind of just, so right here, we're just gonna go ahead and click the gyro sync button and see how that looks. So we'll go ahead and adjust. Oh, no, see it's not a good sync point because it's got this point at the bottom. The camera must have been uh, panning up, or, uh, up and down. So let's just delete that. Okay, that looks pretty flat and level. Let's try it there. And see, that's good. I'm not getting those weird banding lines, top, bottom, bottom, left, or right. And the footage is just showing you a repeating clip of that section, and it looks really smooth. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Um, some GoPros only require a one data point sync. Uh, I know I have the six, and I think it requires two. Um, I don't think it's going to hurt to put in an extra one anyway. But there's no need to go hog wild and add a bunch of data sync points. It's just not necessary. I think two is really all you need. So here's another spot. We'll pause it. Add the gyro data. And that looks, well, I guess I'm not on the adjustment. Let's click on the adjustment. Yes, it looks smooth. I don't see any of that weird stuff here. So that's basically it for adding your gyro data. Now, these are your ins and outs. So there's no point in rendering out unnecessary data, like until you're ready to start flying. So basically, I wait till I see that it's on the ground, and then I'll put my endpoint just before that because I don't need uh, you know two minutes of footage of me sitting on the ground or whatever it is. So 
and then uh, find an output point. You can figure it out wherever you want. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and set the output to here because we're not really gonna render this out. There are settings here. Um, you can change how smooth the video is. I pretty much always leave it at normal. I've experimented going high and you'll see that Real Steady uses gyro data from point to point. And what I mean by that is it's like a keyframe. So if you do a sharp turn here and 10 seconds later you do another sharp turn, it's gonna kinda try and smooth out between those turns. And it'll do that by zooming in and out of the footage. So it kinda makes the footage looks like it's breathing in and out. And it's not necessarily a good look. You can reduce that by lowering this. And if you lower it, then you're not gonna get as much of that breathing, but you're also not gonna get as much stability. So then I pretty much never even mess with this um, unless I find once it's exported that there's something that I don't like about it, then I'll come back in and re-render. But then you just click save video. And it's gonna output the, I don't have any audio, so it's giving me that error message, but you'll see it rendering here. It's just gonna make its way through and it's gonna stick the file right next to the original file. So if you're editing off an SD card, it's gonna end up on the SD card. So just a little pointer there. So that's, that's basically real steady go in a nutshell. All right guys, so in Final Cut Pro, we're gonna go ahead and create a new project. And we're gonna set it to 4K. Um, I'm filming in 60 frames per second, but we wanna render in 29.97 or 30 frames per second. So we're gonna go ahead and just select that. And then we're gonna select a clip. So this was a flight I did at the park the other day. And you can see it turned red because I'm using what's called a proxy. Um, you can convert your videos into a proxy or you can do the original. But sometimes when you start editing on the original product, it starts to get a little laggy um, depending on the speed of your computer or the quality of the video or the hard drive you have it stored on. So I usually end up uh, editing in proxy. You don't have to do this, um, but it does help your computer a little bit. And then I just convert this file into a proxy file. Uh, it'll store it locally on the hard drive. You can see here that it's going to work. And this will take a while. All right, so that took a while to complete, but it did convert to proxy. So this will be a little easier to manage and work with. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that I have bars at the top in the uh, top and bottom, that's because a real steady go converts the 4K image and it shrinks it down to stabilize it. Um, if I shot in four by three aspect ratio, that wouldn't happen, but then I would lose to 60 frames per second. And I like to utilize the slow motion from time to time, so it's nice to have because I have an older GoPro, uh, GoPro Hero 6. Okay, so I'm not gonna edit this entire full length video. We're just gonna do a chunk or a section of it. But the first thing I like to do is trim the fat. So I'll kind of just go ahead and hit play. And then right where there's a good spot where it's starting to level out the flight, I'll usually start it. And, and if I wanted to start it at the beginning, which let's just say we want to do that, I'll usually start it right here. Give the user a perspective of showing the ground and then the takeoff. And what we'll do is let's just go ahead and trim through. I mean, this isn't the best flight video, but let's just go ahead and skim through and we'll get to couple parts that we want to keep so I'm just kind of cruise through this let's just do let's just make this a short I don't know maybe a minute and a half there's roughly a minute and a half okay so this is just gonna be a, a demo of some of the techniques for editing so uh, I use the blade tool and I'll cut it and then I can delete the rest of that and then I can size it like that so then I can actually see what I'm working with here. What I like to do is find the music that fits the flow of the video. Uh, I use Soundstripe for my royalty free music. I have an account with them. I have for several years now because I do use it for other things besides FPV footage for my other uh, clients. So I usually come here and just pick something that um, kind of fits the mood. So let's go to music. Honestly this could be the most time consuming part sometimes just trying to find the right song for it. I'm not going to stress over that for the sake of this video, but we'll find something good here.
Okay, we'll try this one. It's about a minute 44, so that's pretty close to the length of our video, so we can always stretch the video out to, to match that. So let's just go ahead and download a preview of this one before we actually license it. And we can just drag this right into our timeline here. And the next thing I start doing is kind of getting things to match the speed of the, vi of the song. Uh, I always match my music with my video. That's, there's key points in the video when you're flying that you can match to a change in the beat or a rhythm or a whoosh or a, whatever it could be. Editing uh, the video to the music is extremely important to me. So let's uh, go ahead and just give that a shot to show you an example of what that might look like. So let's start playing from the beginning. Sounds dry. So you can see right there where it swoops. What I want to do is I want that drone to just take off right when that first beat hits. Sounds dry. So we may want to pull this back a little bit. Sounds dry. There you go, that's pretty close. And sometimes what I'll do too is I'll, I'll slow the footage down or I'll speed the footage up to just kind of meet those key moments in the video that we were talking about earlier. So. Sometimes what I'll do is once I know there's a good beat, uh, a good mark from the beginning, like right here. Sounds dry. So what I'll do is that when I know there's a, a point that has a good match with the music, um, I'll go, I'll hit Shift B, which will basically put a little a mark here for the time. So this part is this is playing at 100% speed, and this is playing at 100% speed. But I'll show you here in a minute if I want to kind of speed it up or slow it down to make it match the next section of music, it will warp from right here as opposed to warping from the beginning because I want this part to remain the same. So let's just go ahead and play and see if there's any key moments that we can match with the music. Sounds dry. Okay, so that part right there where it did the whoosh, that might be a good spot to kind of do as it whooshes past these things. So let's maybe put another marker here. So I'm just going to hit the Shift B to add another time warp marker. And what it looks like we're going to end up doing is slowing the footage down. So when it reaches that whoosh part, there's something going past the screen. Okay, so right there, as it went through the goalpost, would be a good spot to put a, another, like a time marker. Back it up a little bit. So as it goes through, I'm gonna hit uh, Shift B again and put another time warp marker here. And, and of course, this type of flow is like for a one pack edit. This is not like where you're taking chunks of a flight and you're putting a piece here and a piece there, because that's a totally different workflow. This is more for like a one pack edit or something where you just wanna have a long flow um, maybe you have a 45 second flow and you want to match it a little bit better. So right here we know that this is where I go through the goal post. And right here you can see that the music changes. So like right here, if we stretch this out and slow down the footage, let's see how that looks. So now it's got that nice little spot between the clips. Get this high up pan look that matches with that music. And we're just gonna wait for that next key moment uh, where we wanna kind of strike the time together with the music. Okay, right there. So what I'll do is when I start, when the camera just starts to dip down, like right here, I'm gonna put another time marker there. 
and we're gonna go back to that drop of that whoosh, which I think is somewhere here, right here. So we're gonna speed this footage up a little bit. So you can tell that this footage is now 5% faster than it was originally filmed. So, but this is gonna make it give a nice little pop here when it comes down and over those trees. So here we go. Looks like we need to drag out our clip a little bit more. Okay, right there I'm going to stop it when the camera kind of levels out because that's a really, uh, it's easy to look at on the eye. So what we're going to do is that and then at the end, right at the last bar of the music, we're going to stop it and then we're actually going to take the opacity on the footage, drone footage, it's at 100%, we're going to set a keyframe. So right here it's going to be at 100% and everywhere before this is going to be at 100%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the last frame, click back, and we're going to set another keyframe, but from here it's going to go to zero. So you'll see as I roll over this, you can see the automation going from zero to 100 or 100 to zero. And that'll make it fade out real nice at the end. Okay, so Obviously this isn't a really complex video or anything like that. It's just kind of a simple edit. I just want to give you guys some ideas of how to make your FPV footage flow a little bit better uh, with the music and things like that. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of color correcting now. So I like to go to a spot where it's got a nice, you know, it's got a mix of sky, ground, highlights, dark. So this is a pretty good part right here. Um, I did film in the GoPro color log and um, it's kind of a more flat profile, um, it, although I don't think it really is that flat. This is pretty vibrant. So what we can do is click on the clip and we can just take the vibrancy of the entire clip up a little bit to start with and see how that looks. So you can see I pumped it up a little bit. Now it's really popping. It looks like a, a springtime shot. Um, and being that this is a well-lit shot, another thing that I'll do is I will take the mid-tones of the shadows and I'll bring the midtones of the shadows down. You can already see like, okay, that's a lot, that's too high. This is normal, but if you just bring it down a little bit, it kind of gives uh, a nice contrast to everything. So that's, that's another thing I like to do as far as color correcting. This isn't gonna be a, like a, a color correcting tutorial. I just wanna show you a couple simple steps you can take. Uh, another thing I like to do is find <clears throat> something with uh, in the frame where there's something that's you know, pure white, <clears throat> like this clip right here of the American flag, and I'll do a color balance right here. And you can see it, it did an automatic color balance, so that's without it, that's with it. Uh, I don't really like that auto color balance, so I'm going to do a, a custom white balance, and I'm going to use this little eyedropper, and we're going to select, you know, basically something that's pure white. Um, and things can be a little bit off-white because of the sun or the color or whatever. But I think that piece I selected there looks pretty good. So there it is off, there it is on. So it's just kind of doing a, a white balance across the entire image. Um, another thing I do, which is kind of a little maybe unnecessary for most of these clips, but um, I'll take the luma and the saturation and I'll clip the color out of the lows and the highs. And you probably won't notice it on this clip. Yeah, you really don't in this section of the clip, but if you're in somewhere where there's a lot of shadows, uh, let me see if I can find a part of this video that it may affect. Um, yeah, you don't really see it, but what it does is sometimes if, if you have like a blue tint to your darks, um, it will just get rid of that. It'll make it, it'll make it more of a pure black. It gets rid of any colors in the white, so if you have a yellow tint to your clouds or they're a little bit blue, by clipping the highs and the lows, the shadows and the highlights, it'll kind of eliminate some of that. It's kind of a little secret trick. Looks pretty good. And then, depending on how you filmed it, you may want to add um, 
some sharpness to your clip. So I, I film in a low or medium sharpness setting in on the GoPro because I think the high is too high and then there's nothing you can really do about it once it's there. But I, can, I like to add some sharpness to the clip afterward. Um, and remember, if you're, if you're working in proxy like I am, this is a low lower quality preview. So you wanna switch back to the optimize and it takes a second to update. But now you can see it's a more crisp, clear. I don't know if you can see on YouTube or not, but um, yeah, it definitely looks better when you switch over to like this. And I think this may be a little too sharp. So let's go to like 1.5. And that looks pretty good right there. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to proxy. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got edited so far. So I'm fairly happy with that edit. I mean, it looks pretty good. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and license this song. And we're gonna delete the one that has the water markings on it because we're happy with this version. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back and I'm gonna turn the, uh, let the audio fade out at the end there. Uh, I also noticed that sometimes these uh, clips are, they, they seem a little hot. Like in Final Cut, it's right at that edge where it's clipping. You don't want that because if you add any Foley or sound effects to it, for sound design, you're gonna clip right away. So I always set my audio about negative 1.5 dB to give a little bit of headroom there. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, I know that wasn't like an amazing FPV video or anything, but I just wanted to show you some of the basic techniques that I'm using to achieve what I'm achieving in my videos and uh, kind of share some stuff with you guys so maybe you can improve your videos a little bit as well if you're looking to do that. Well, hopefully some of you guys find this information useful. If you do or you have other techniques or little tricks that you guys do in your FPV footage that kind of adds that little extra something something to your footage, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what other little tricks you guys are using. Um, these are just some of the basics that I'm using and I hope they help you guys. So if you like this video, of course, like it and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.